Welcome back. Crude oil prices pulling back this morning on the heels of some weak Chinese manufacturing data out this morning. Six and a half year low for that purchasing managers index in China. My next guest says the worst is not over for oil, calling for a slide into mid 30s. Joining us right now is Stephen Short. He's the editor of the Short Report. And Stephen, it's always nice to have you on the program. Great to be back. Thank you. You think oil goes from here into the 30s. How low can it go? Well, We've already really gotten down, Maria, to levels that I thought we could get down to. Now, given the volatility and the spikes we've seen over the last few days, I think the real concern now is, has oil bottomed at this point? I want to start off with the demand side, Maria, because what we have to appreciate is the fall in oil prices this year, along with the fall in industrial metal prices, is the canary in the coal mine. So now it's coming to fruition. What have we seen over this past summer? Well, essentially, China's central bank has become the world's largest specialist firm trying to prop up that country's <laughs> stock market. Yeah, we've, yeah, seen right. devaluation of, we've seen the devaluation of the when, okay? So now here in the United States, okay, yes, Q2 GDP came in like gangbusters. But let's not lose sight of the fact that we are now readjusting and adding another seasonal adjustment to the GDP figures in that number. So Wall Street really did not have a history on how to gauge that report, hence the large miss. Now we look forward to Q3 GDP. The Atlanta Fed, their growth estimate is 1.3%, 1.4%. So clearly on the global stage, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, not rainbows so and puppy supply, dogs, as Keith would like to say. Yep. He's almost got my thesis okay. down pat here, but... Yep, that's your thesis. <laughs> so I think, I, think, I think you're right. I mean, you know, Stephen, if you look at markets, clearly they look forward. They don't look backward. Q2 was yesterday. We're, in, we're actually two-thirds of the way through Q3. Um, how about yesterday's Indeed. move, just in context, relative to the path forward? I, I completely agree. I think GDP could be as low as zero for the third quarter if you look at the way the, the headline looks at it. We have an estimate of about that level. Uh, and I'm looking the wrong way, but here I'm back to you. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 that's the question. What was yesterday's move relative to the path you see forward? Was there something there that you thought was, uh, you know, a complete fade or not? Uh, no, the, the, the two, there were two things. If all we had yesterday was that OPEC bulletin, <coughs> right. which some media outlets are reporting, was the catalyst. No, that, that's, that's a joke. That, that had I nothing it was to joke. do I don't know yeah. with the run-up in price. Yeah. So, 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 no, the real catalyst. Yeah. Sorry, Steve, I had a quick question. So for the average yes. investor, uh, they're asking a couple of questions. What is driving this depression in oil and energy stocks? And what is the upside? When should the average investor, the regular person, as I keep referencing, you know, get involved or tell their advisor to say, you know what, I, I really feel good about getting in. At what point that does any of that happen? Where, where does the value begin? Well, in the energy sector, the value is going to start to appear on the E&P side because they are about to get slaughtered. Because at this point, what we have, what we have now is to, to go back to answer the first question, the catalyst behind yesterday's drive was the EIA threw the market a complete curveball. They changed the methodology and how they estimate crude oil production starting with yesterday's report. And essentially, based on the implied numbers we were getting on the weekly data, the report was about 250,000 barrels per day lower production. Right. Yeah. So that is the real catalyst there. Now, we're going to go into the fall. The banks are going to do the redeterminations on their credit facilities for catalyst. the E&Ps. Mm -hmm. Now, unlike the spring, when you had a rally in prices, yeah. a, a dead count bounce in prices, and you still had a very high back end of the curve, the EMPs were able to hedge. That is hedging is collateral. Therefore, they were able to continue to feast on the Fed's easy money. This is a That's really, not going to happen. This. this is a really, really important point. In fact, one yeah. of the investment managers I was speaking with earlier in the week said to me, the knock-on, knock-on, knock-on effect of weaker commodities prices, mm -hmm. that's what's going to keep the selling uh, sharply lower for stocks. Stephen, thanks for being here.